The year was 1987, and I was but a five-year-old lad, barely discovering my budding love for the Nintendo Entertainment System and the personal home computer. Meanwhile, RV giant Fleetwood was cranking out hits like this 22E Tioga Arrow. Um, it's not a spring chicken. I mean, I think the serial number is like five. <laughs> but frankly, guys, for an 87, I think you could do a lot worse. It is obviously dated. You know, the material colors, the selection, the decor, the uh, <laughs> shag carpeting. It's actual shag carpeting. Um, you know, it shows age. But you know what it doesn't show? It doesn't show abuse. I'm not seeing the signatures of like major ownership, like maintenance failures. Overall, this thing could be frankly worse. Quick note while I'm walking past it. I looked up at the generator and it, the generator has logged eight hours. I don't believe the generator's ever really been used. It's got, what is it, like 34,000 miles on the chassis. Uh, the best I could estimate right now is that the generator probably needs a full run-through service at something like a small engine repair shop. It's probably got old gas in it that's gummed up the carburetor. I have not personally got the generator to start. Um, someone's naturally going to say, yeah, but aren't you going to do that kind of stuff? Understand, ladies and gentlemen, we try to have a little bit of something here for everybody at Halet RV. And an RV of this age and in this price bracket, which you can see by clicking the link in the video description that says check for price and availability. If we have it still in stock, it'll be listed there. If it's gone, it'll be gone and we do display pricing. But when you're in the sub $10,000 budget range, there's a lot of people trying to buy anything that can't buy a new or more expensive RV. And every time we pay a certified technician money to go through something like that, it naturally dings the price tag. And we are trying to bring offerings to anybody so that everybody can go camping. Now, there's also a lot of people who are handy, mechanically inclined folks. If you can go through a carburetor and just kind of clean it out and put it back together, you could save yourself a lot of money by you doing it and not having us do it. So, you know, pretty traditional, Class C, upper front bunk here. Um, it looks like in the past, there's been maybe, you can see that little ripple up there, maybe a little point of water penetration, but overall, I'm not seeing anything too scary. However, I think it may have had a leak that was nicely repaired, because if you notice, you see the color of this wood tone wall panel, and you see the color of that wood tone wall panel, they're not the same. And Fleetwood would have used the same wood paneling all the way through, so I believe the front end of this has basically been peeled, cleaned up, and put back together. But that's the thing. Somebody actually spent the time, effort, and money to do that. They didn't let it sit. They didn't let it rot. And I think that there's value in that. I think it's important when people don't let things rot. You know, pretty common, just four-person family dinette. You could fold that down into a bonus sleeper if need be. Your uh, kitchenette is pretty commonly laid out for something smaller like this. You know, you got your full overhead cabinetry here above your dinette that kind of just bleeds into the kitchen area. Very simple, you know, uh, you know, stove, oven, microwave setup. Uh, remember, too, though, an RV of this age, guys, this is an as-is, where-is, how-is kind of purchase. I have not personally tested anything in this. I haven't personally tested the air conditioner, the refrigerator, the microwave, the water heater, the anything. I pushed the generator button a little bit and I just really didn't get anything out of it. I think that uh, I might be in a low power situation. I don't know. Long story short, there are a lot of unknowns in this RV at this time. So this video is here to give you an idea. Obviously, nobody parts with thousands of dollars willy-nilly. Uh, at least I hope not. I do believe that you folks are smarter than that. The uh, point I'm getting at is, how do you know? Well, give our team a call, and we can get it pulled up to the building, schedule a time where you can come see it, and you can come push all the buttons. You can see it in action or not in action and know exactly what you're getting. What I can tell you, though, is, let's say hypothetically, this microwave works. A week from now, it might not, and you will own a non-working microwave. 
I just want to set an expectation very clear. I cannot make a promise for a 1987 motorhome, no matter how well kept. It's, it, it's old, guys. It's, what, what, 31 years old or something like that? So just keep it in mind. I do notice, though, it does have a brand new mattress still in the bag. <laughs> so how about that? Still in the wrapper. Um, and an open concept like bath right here. And this, you would never see this fly in today's day and age. But I think that we have different expectations as consumers now versus the times of yesteryear. And I'm not saying one is better, one is worse. They're just different. And this makes the RV look and feel bigger. But there's also a lot of people who are going to go, <laughs> um, I don't crap where I sleep, bud. Uh, there better be a wall between us at the very least. And I respect that. But it is what it is. And there's certainly going to be somebody who's like, look, I'm looking for a cheap motor home to like do a NASCAR weekend. Man, this this is like, this is NASCAR Supreme type uh, material right here. So back outside, right where we started. From a distance, it doesn't look too bad. But then you get up close and it doesn't look too bad. It's an 87. You know, there's a little, little boop, little pop mark. Maybe right there. A little bit of weathering on some of these horizontal stripes, but frankly, guys, I've seen worse. Uh, the tires uh, look fantastic. This thing's got new sneakers all the way around. I don't see any sort of weather checking or anything. Now, remember how I said I believe the front end of this has been rebuilt. Another thing that makes me feel that is if I get right up here, you can see all sorts of resealing where this thing's been peeled apart and Frankenstein back together. But frankly, I, I challenge you to show me uh, a 1987 Fleetwood Tioga Aero 22E that doesn't have something like that. Where, I mean, again, frankly, considering the age of this rig, I'm, I'm not really disappointed with what I see. I'm not gonna make promises for it, but I've literally once seen, uh, well, twice actually, seen motorhomes that were so badly water damaged, there were mushrooms growing out of the carpet. I don't see any of that here. Overall, this thing looks, <laughs> pretty fine. But this was really built kind of in, in one of the peak heydays of Fleetwood RV when they were just crushing the RV market. Now, um, modern RV would have a 5,000 pound tow rating and this does have uh, a two inch receiver hitch that's all super duper heavily reinforced, welded in there. And it does have a um, harness, wiring harness to plug a trailer in to have like trailer brakes and all that. But something this age, guys, I have I, I don't know what this was supposedly rated to tow. So just kind of keep that in mind. Again, I, I think this is something where someone's just gonna, you know, pull it out of the pole barn or off the backyard, drive it to a NASCAR race and park for a weekend and have a good time. That's how I imagine this thing to be used right here. But like I said, overall it doesn't look bad. Now, again, the generator here, that's a big, big question mark. Um, I, I, I do believe again that it probably just needs to run through a small engine shop just to get cleaned up. Now understand, we can do things like that for you guys, but if we start outsourcing, uh, you know, extra pieces, parts, services, etc., naturally there's fees associated with something like that. So we can do it and we can happily get you a quote for something like that. We can get you a quote with everything all put together. Or once again, if you're a handy mechanical person, Man, you've got a, frankly, a, a, a fairly solid used motorhome here that I don't think is going to give you too many problems from a mechanical standpoint. So just regular maintenance and upkeep, and I bet you'll keep on trucking down the road. So with that, give us a call, 800-256-5196, Haywood RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.